is a tribute to Girish, uh, one of the greatest playwrights of our country. Uh, we've all benefited from his plays, we've acted in them, we've known them, studied them, and therefore we thought we'd do uh, some brief excerpts from some of his plays that were accessible to us. The idea was Suhela's, and I'm speaking on her behalf. She refuses to speak. Tughlaq, written in 1964, when he was 27, focused on the 14th century Turco-Indian ruler Muhammad bin Tughlaq. A genius whose impulsive and strange decisions often mystified his courtiers and family. It is both a historical play as well as a co commentary on the contemporary politics of the 1960s. The play was seen as an allegory on Nehruvian socialism, which started with ambitious idealism but ended up in disillusionment. Tughlaq is the story of a ruler with a grand vision of a unified India, one who sought to put aside religious differences in the hopes of embracing secularism. He is in fact even credited with building the Nizamuddin Dargah in Delhi. Aspiration collides with reality as the king fails to achieve his vision and is therefore judged a failure. In this episode, Tughlaq's secular politics are being discussed by his subjects as also their resistance to his desire to shift the capital from Delhi to Dolatabad, an event that led to tragic consequences. The yard in front of the Chief Court of Justice in Delhi, a crowd of citizens, mostly Muslims, with a few Hindus here and there. God, what is this country coming to? What are you worried about, Grandmother? The country is in perfectly safe hands, safer than any you've seen before. I don't know. I've been alive a long time, seen many sultans, but I never thought I would live to see a thing like this. Your days are over, old woman. What's the use of sultans who didn't allow a subject within a mile's distance? This king now, he isn't afraid to be human. But does he have to make such a fuss about being human? Announce his mistakes to the whole world? Invite the entire capital? And get kicked by an infidel too? It's an insult to Islam. <laughs> That's good. Insult to Islam. So you want to teach him Islam, do you? Tell me, how often did you pray before he came to the throne? That isn't the point. That's precisely the point. Not even once a week, I bet. Now you pray five times a day because that's the law. And if you break it, you'll have the officers on your neck. Can you mention one earlier sultan in whose time people read the Quran in the streets like now? Just one. What's the use? One must act according to. All this about the Hindus not paying the jazia tax. That's against the Quran, you know. Amolvi told me that. No, no. Don't look at me when you say that. We didn't want an exemption. Look. When a sultan kicks me in the teeth and says, pay up you Hindu dog, I'm happy. I know I'm safe. But the moment a man comes along and says, I know you're a Hindu, but you're also a human being. Well, that makes me nervous. <laughs> Ungrateful wretch. <laughs> but this wretch is our best friend, Jamal. Beware of the Hindu who embraces you. Before you know what, he'll turn Islam into another caste and call the Prophet an incarnation of his God. Attention! Attention! In the name of Allah, it is hereby announced that Vishnu Prasad, a Brahmin of Shiknar, had filed a suit against his merciful majesty that his land had been seized illegally by the officers of the state and that he should be given just compensation for the loss of the land and the privation resulting therefrom. The qazi e mumalik having considered this matter carefully and in full detail, has declared... Has declared that the Brahmin's claim is just... What? 
that the Brahmin's claim is just and that his merciful majesty is guilty of illegal appropriation of land. The Qazi Mumalik has further declared that in return for the land and in compensation of the privation resulting from its loss, the said Vishnu Prasad should receive a grant of five hundred silver dinars from the state yes, treasury. His merciful majesty has accepted the decision of the qazi e mumalik as just. And in addition to the grant of 500 silver dinars, has offered the said Vishnu Prasad a post in the civil service to ensure him a regular and adequate income. What folly is this? May heaven guide us, Sultan. I don't believe a word of it. There's something more to this. That much is obvious. Attention, attention! The warrior in the path of God, the defender of the word of the Prophet, the friend of the Khalif, the just, his merciful majesty, Sultan Muhammad Tughlaq! Victory, Victory, to the Victory, king. To the king. Victory to the king! My beloved people, you have heard the judgment of the Qazi and seen for yourselves how justice works in my kingdom. Without any consideration of might or weakness, religion or creed, may this moment burn bright and light up our path towards greater justice, equality, progress and peace. Not just peace, but a more purposeful life. But for me, the most important factor is that Dolatabad is a city of the Hindus. And as the capital, it will symbolize the bond between Muslims and Hindus, which I wish to develop and strengthen in my kingdom. I invite you all to accompany me to Dolatabad. This is only an invitation, not in order. Only those who have faith in me may come with me. With their help, I shall build an empire which shall be the envy of the world. Exits with the retinue. You can go to the qazi e mumalik for small offenses, but who do you appeal to against such madness? This is tyranny, sheer tyranny. Move the capital to Dolatabad. Such things never happened in his father's days. May his soul rest in peace. Now he's got his father's throne and he isn't happy with that. What do you mean? What? What did you mean by that when you said he's got his father's throne? Don't try and threaten me, boy. The whole capital saw it. So what? You know what? Were you there? There were others, my friends. And your friends, were you there? No. Well, I was and I'll tell you it was an accident. I see. It was. The elephant suddenly went wild. The crowds must have frightened it. It just ran and dashed against the wooden pandal and the pandal collapsed. <laughs> Very convenient. And to think the procession had been arranged by the father in his honor. But the Sultan had gone to the mosque to pray. The old Sultan would never have had the procession at prayer time. You all know it was prayer time and the Sultan never misses a prayer. Uh, yes, yes, we know that. But tell me something. How did the elephant know it was time for prayer? Huh? <laughs> His next play, Hayavadan, was based on a theme drawn from The Transposed Heads, a 1940 novella by Thomas Mann, originally found in the 11th century Sanskrit text, Kathasarit Sagar. The story is of two friends, Devadatta, and Kapila, who have a strong bond of friendship, but love the same woman. In an act of sacrifice, where both behead themselves for the sake of the other, Padmini, their common love interest, who has also desired both men, one for his brain and the other for his brawn, gets a boon from a rather irritated goddess Kali to rejoin the heads to the bodies, <coughs> to bring them back to life. 
Padmini accidentally switches the heads and bodies, getting Devadatta's head on the muscular kapila and vice versa. Ultimately getting the ideal man, but is unable to walk off into the sunset with him because the other body had claimed her in marriage before and had impregnated her. <laughs> it's an interesting story, a study of identity, desire, selfishness, and man's interminable search for perfection. This segment is about Padmini's meeting with the goddess Kali and her remonstrations with her for having accepted the sacrifices of both the men. She enters the temple and stumbles upon the decapitated bodies. Before they went. What shall I do? Oh, what shall I do? Oh, Devdat, what did I do that you left me alone in this state? Was that how much you loved me? And you, Kapila, who looked at me with dog's eyes, you too. How selfish you are, how unkind. What shall I do now? Where shall I go? How can I go home? Home. And what shall I say when I get there? What shall I say happened? Who will believe me? They'll all say that the two fought and died for this whore. They're bound to say it. Then what will happen to me? No, Mother Kali, no. It's too horrible to think of. No. Kapila's gone. Devadat's gone. Let me go with them. Picks up the sword. Don't have the strength to hack off my head. But what does it matter how I die, Mother? You don't care. It's the same to you, another offering. Have it then. Here's another offering for you. Lifts the sword and puts its point on her breast when, from behind the curtain, the goddess's voice is heard. Hey! Padmini freezes. Put it down. Put down that sword. Padmini jumps up in fright and throwing the sword aside, tries to run out of the temple, then stops. Who is that? Who's that? A tremendous noise of drums. Padmini shuts her eyes in terror. Behind the curtain, one sees the uplifted, blood-red palms of the goddess. The curtain is lowered and taken away, and one sees a terrifying figure. Her arms stretched out, her mouth wide open with the tongue rolling out. The drums stop, and as the goddess drops her arms and shuts her mouth, it becomes clear she has been yawning. <sighs> All right. Open your eyes and be quick. Don't waste time. Padmini opens her eyes and sees the goddess. She runs and falls at her feet. Mother? Yes, Kali. yes, 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 it's me. Ah, there was a time many, many years ago when at this hour they would have the Mangala Arati. The devotees used to make a deafening racket with drums and conch shells and cymbals. So I used to be wide awake around now. I have lost the habit. <sighs> right, what do you want? Tell me I'm pleased with you. Save me, mother. <laughs> I know, I've done that already. Do you call this saving mother of all nature? I can't show my face to anyone in the world. I can't Yes, go. yes, yes, you've said that once. No need to repeat yourself. Now do as I tell you. Put these heads back properly, attach them to their bodies, and then press that sword on their necks. They'll come up alive. Is that enough? Oh, mother, you're out of breath, you're out of bread and water. Skip mother. it, skip it. Huh? Do as I told you, and quickly, I'm collapsing with sleep. But uh, may I ask you a question? Uh, if it isn't too long. Can there ever be anything you already don't know, mother? Uh, the past and the future are mere specks in your palm. Then uh, why didn't you stop Devadatta when he came here? Why didn't you stop Kapila? 
If you'd saved either of them, I would have been spared all this terror. I would have been spared all this agony. Why did you wait so long, mother? Is that all you can think of now? Mother, <laughs> I've never seen anyone like you. How could one possibly hide anything from you, mother? Uh, that's true enough. Nag Mandala. Nag Mandala has been taken from a folk tale narrated to Karnat by his friend, the poet and scholar A.K. Ramanujan. It is about a young woman, Rani, whose disinterested husband spends time with his concubine, locking her in the house in his absence, returning only once a day for lunch. An old woman gives a love potion to Rani to mix in his milk, which Rani spills and it is drunk by a cobra who lives in a nearby anthill. The cobra falls in love with Rani. All right, then I'd better go. Don't. Please. What is the point of sitting silent like a stone image? What do you, what do you want me to say? Anything. Tell me about yourself, about your parents. Whatever comes into your head. If you want me to stay, tell me why. If you want me to go, tell me why. What can I say if you behave like this? Like what? You talk so nicely at night. But during the day, I only have to open my mouth and you hiss like a stupid snake. <laughs> it's all very well for you to laugh. I feel like crying. What should I do then? Stop coming at night? Or during the day? Who am I to tell you that? It's your house, your pleasure. No, no. Let's say the husband decides on the day visits. Hmm? And the wife decides on the night visits. So, I won't come at night if you don't want me to. Why do you tease me like this? I'm sick of being alone. And then tonight I was terrified you might not come. That what I remembered from last night may just be a dream. I was desperate that you should come again tonight. But what am I to say if you spin riddles like this? I'm afraid that is how it's going to be. Like that during the day. Like this at night. 